Hey everybody, Riot Mort and Riot Kent back again for a patch post-mortem where we talk about what worked, what didn't work, where we succeeded, and where we failed on different patch. Last time our guest was Froden, but Kent, you're back this time, ready to go. How you doing today? I'm good. I just realized this is the first time we, re or not first time, but one of the first times we recorded during the day. So then now, you know, my room is all bright. It's going to be a different change of atmosphere. We're going to have a good time today, right, Mort? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, well, let's jump into it. This was one of the patches as we were approaching, you know, the competitive scene, different regions doing their regionals. Some have already done it. Some are still about to do it. Um, but we've been trying to slowly narrow things down, get it to a good spot. Overall balance is good, but I think one of the big things to talk about, which we'll get into as we go down there, is the difference between high and low elo might be the biggest difference we've ever seen in TFT. Uh, usually we sort of balance around high elo and low elo is like kind of catching up, but there's a pretty big difference, I think, for the first time. So, Yeah, usually what we see is um, we, we, we can balance around the high elo and then eventually the meta will um, shift down and then everyone will kind of copy and see what they see other boards succeed as. Um, after they copy high elo players, things like that. But right now, right now we are seeing some differences. We'll, we'll talk about it. But um, some comms are just dominating and some MRs more than others. Cool. All right, well, let's go into it. Chibi Dragon Mancer Ash. Uh, this buff was really important. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Chibi Dragon Mancer Ash, pretty cool. Oh, and the regular Dragon Mancer, uh, regular Ash. That one is so cute. I I like the boom from the regular one, personally, so. Okay, yeah, the boom, the arrow thing is really cool. I just like that the ash has like the throne and then you can use it on the purple Freljord board and it just like fits so well. Yeah. I, that's my setup right now. Nice. All no right. Ad. Uh, blue orbs. Five gold drops have been removed from blue orbs. I mean, this is one of those things that it'll take a long time to see if it actually has negative ramifications. But obviously in the short term, to the surprise of no one, players are enjoying this and not being down a gold early is a good thing. So for now definitely a positive yeah it's still something that we're going to monitor closely and see you know how it goes so uh seems good first for now but we're, we'll have to see in the long run yep uh treasure dragon we got rid of those two cases the 100 gold went down to 80 i haven't actually seen since we made this change if that made a big deal or how impactful the 80 gold is now uh, i haven't yeah, seen it I, make a big difference i actually saw some players skip over the 80 gold which is like Ooh. good because now there's a decision like do you want that gold or do you want to take the you know rating items and cap out higher than the other players all right so. well either way it's going to be a positive uh and then the clamped health bars which we kind of let ship as a surprise uh this has been a nice positive you can actually see the health bars um long time coming again ux team crushing the quality of life changes so yeah. super good yep all right, uh, on the trait side, the Cavalier buff. This was a buff to everything except six Cavalier. Um, didn't move the needle much, but it's a buff, and so it's, it's fine. Uh, I think Cavalier vertical is always going to have the trouble that it's not a dragon, so, you know, it is what it is. I think it also hurts right now that Nunu's kind of in the dumpster, but overall, this was good for the trait, so... Yeah, after the nerfs to Hecarim and then the big nerfs to uh, Nunu just left Cavaliers in a tough spot. This helps them as like a solid front line, but not enough. And so as a vertical, it, it definitely needs more. It wasn't enough here. Yep. All right. Uh, you want to talk about Dragonmancer? Yeah. Okay. So Dragonmancer is the spicy one. Um, we buffed Dragonmancer. We buffed Kaisa 3. And then we buffed Volibear, which led to some early game like shenanigans around shimmer scale lagoon dragon mancer that kind of thing and then especially around um lower mmrs we're seeing a lot of dragon mancer verticals do exceptionally well especially around karma and you can also play uh uh kaisa and so i think it was the combination of like all of these buffs that led to a stale like early game and also just like domination in the lower mmrs and so um if we could have pulled back somewhere i think we just probably shouldn't have shift shipped we, could, we didn't have to ship all of these buffs at once. I do think that like two Dragonmancer could have used a little nudge, but maybe not in conjunction with all other stuff too. Yeah, you, you and I weren't super aligned on this one. Um, but the thing is like, yeah, two Dragonmancer isn't strong, but two Dragonmancer leads to four Dragonmancer leads to, you know, and so I don't know. I'm still skeptical that it really needed it. Um, if anything, it just made the like four Dragonmancer versions really, really strong fast eight comps. Uh, which I think was the big side effect here. Um, but yeah, I think in particular, 
this allowed lower MMRs to just play this, lose less health until they hit their six Dragon Mancer Karmas, uh, which Karma in particular is the champion. Like we say very little in tournaments in high elo, but man, at low elo, like players are still raging about Karma. So uh, yeah, this to me it seems like the biggest miss of the patch for sure. Yeah, I think if I could cut any one line from the patch, I would probably cut this line. Yep. Um, so yep, I have to pick one. Uh, all right, uh, guild, Twitch. Uh, so I think this was good. Well, specifically, the, let's just go all over all of it. Actually, we have the Twitch change, the Omnivamp change, and then the nerf to like seven and eight. Um, I think the Omnivamp one was great. Like that was really needed. Guild emblem in particular was just continues to be a very insanely powerful item, especially on Deja, but as well as the usual Zaya build. I think the attack speed on Twitch was correct. Um, someone called it out to me, and I thought this was interesting because it's always the challenge of balance, is it meant Twitch reroll became a lot worse? But it's like, yeah, I get it, and I still think this was the correct change. Uh, I think the guild multiplier, we probably could have gone a little harder on like the 5-6 range as opposed to the 7 and 8. Uh, I think the 7 and 8 was necessary also. I think in conjunction, though, this all seems fairly okay. Um from what I've seen, so. Yeah, it seems like Guild still landed in a good spot. Like, Guild is still good, it's just not horribly OP as it was last patch. So, personally, I think this was a success. We hit the vertical Guild correctly, um, and then we hit the two um, multipliers that, like, mattered a lot. I think one thing we might have maybe also considered hitting was Bard's mana, maybe from, like, 2 to 1.5, something like that. Um, but... Uh, didn't want to go too far, didn't want to like overshoot and just like nerf guild to the ground. And so I think guild landed in a pretty good spot from 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 these nerfs. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we didn't do the bard change actually though, because guild like from what I've seen, guild is not the S tier right now. And so uh, I I'm glad we didn't like kind of obliterate it into B tier, you know. Yeah, totally. Uh all right, Jade five nerf. Uh this was good. I'm glad we did it. It was a pretty sizable chunk. Uh Soyfin still quite good. Um so I think this was a success. I actually don't think if Soyfin needs more nerfs, it's things like, you know, which we saw in the B patch, things like Shio Yu or Siphon rather than five Jade. Uh, so I'm going to call this one a successful change. Yeah. And one of the positives about this is we didn't nerf seven and nine and we're actually seeing some Jade seven yeah. games, which is great. It's like, now you can go vertical. It's like, no, you no longer always stop at five unless you have like an emblem to go seven. So yep. it's good. Agreed. Uh, Rage Wing 8 buff. Uh, I think this was actually a good change. And here's my crazy shot call. We're not changing this or buffing this next patch. My crazy shot call is in some of the regionals and possibly even worlds, we're going to see an 8 Rage Wing game. That's my, that's my crazy shot call. Uh, I think if, you know, it's one of those cases where you need the right augment, things like Scorch or Tantrum, or you hit a bunch of early sets and you play like a set reroll into an 8 Rage Wing and you happen to hit the Shivana. Uh, I but I think actually if you can pull it off, it's like not a meme anymore. Like you get a lot of healing on that comp. Yeah, I actually I I would love to see that. So if anybody pulls this off, I'm gonna be I'm gonna have a very fun time as a watcher. Yeah, I think for for what the trait's gonna be right because it doesn't require any emblems or anything like that. I think it's close to as powerful as it could be. Maybe you could give it more attack speed, but again, for a vertical trait like this, it is what it is, and at least now it's not like meme trap status yeah yep agree uh all right senna uh the change was fine this is another change i would call didn't move the needle but like nothing wrong with it senna got buffed a bit cool yeah i think this is this probably also helps contribute to the rage wing thing where it's like you have a unit that can actually nuke the backline twice in a fight now um yeah. i don't know i think the mana change actually ended up pretty impactful where like i'm seeing senna's hit like much harder now because it's like you know you can cast you bring down that back line to like half health they start healing back up and then you nuke them again and it's um actually pretty impactful for like how senna was in the early game she really didn't need it though because last patch she was like really bad i think um ultimately like cannon ears as a vertical still needs some work yep. um but this at least helps senna like match up to ezreal as an item holder yep uh all right Zach. So I think this was probably one of the more controversial ones because clearly the side effect of all this patch was that there was the Kaisa, Zach, 
Uh, I think sometimes you even take Malphite and you like you reroll a ton of these and you end up with that incredibly tanky front line. I think all this change did, it was one of those placebo changes where it got people to play a tank a champion that was already tanky enough. It still doesn't do a ton of damage. Um, so I I think this change was still correct, just maybe not in conjunction with some of the stuff like the Kaisa and Dragon Mancer that we talked about. But I wouldn't delete this line. I think this is still good for Zack. Um, and then, you know, you and I talked to afterwards that like Zach's problem now might actually just be that now that players have figured out how to play him, he might actually just be healing too much. Um, but overall, I think the damage change here was still healthy. Yeah, completely agree. I, I, the one thing I would say about this line is that I wish we did this two patches ago. Um, Zach's damage has been like negligible the whole time. And he like, now he actually, you can see the numbers and it's like, uh, it's not amazing, but it's not bad. And so I wish we did this earlier. I wish we, um, thought of this earlier even though like you know zach was played in vertical lagoon it was never like that exciting to have him and this just increases the excitement also lets us find out earlier like if players know how to optimally build him um we can nerf his health a little bit or healing if needed yep um okay so next up we have namzi where we nerfed mage namzi because mage namzi was far and away the best version of namzi with some very slight buffs to lulu for Evoker Namzi and Tristana for Cannoneer Namzi. Um, my read on this was this was a miss, not directionally, but just like where we wanted it to end up. Because I think what actually ended up happening is like Mage Namzi's like B to C tier, unless you get really good augments now um, and really good items, it's like much harder to play. But it also nerfed Evoker more than the buff did. So Evoker Namzi just ended up even worse than she was before. And then Cannoneer Namzi, it wasn't enough. So like Cannoneer, like you mentioned earlier, the vertical's still bad. So overall, Namzi just ended up in a worse spot than before. And so like Namzi's not a champion you play very often. So I guess I wish we'd done this, but pushed it a lot further. I want I want to see like Evoker Namzi get better, Cannoneer Namzi get better. Then we can have that lower base damage. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. I think like Namzi in the right spot is still like as a mage is still really good it's just like now you never play evoker you never play cannon i tried to play so many cannon near noms games because it's fun but it's like yeah uh, yeah it's just basically these buffs were directionally correct just way not far enough i think we should have gone harder on the buffs because we're nerfing the base damage also yep so agree with you uh rengar nerfs i actually think these were solid um from what i'm seeing rengar still being played um you know, Dark Flight seems to be doing pretty well in conjunction with some of the Swain changes. Rengar is still a threat to the back line. Uh, you know, he doesn't necessarily carry the end game without perfect augments or something like that. But unless you three star him, which is what a three cost should be. So Rengar, from what I can tell, seems correct. Yeah, um, it seems to be in a good spot after these nerfs. So agree. Uh, Volibear. This is one that I think a few challenger players called us out on as like a pretty big miss here. Um, I'm kind of split. I think I'm glad we didn't do the damage buff that we were, or the health buff we were talking about. But the big thing that we're seeing with Volibear is that one and two star Volibear are actually very strong if you hit them early. You know, you get a three, a, even a one star Volibear with a Gold Mancer staff on like two one is like a really powerful hit. And being able to cast and do this much damage early is strong. But three star Volibear is still laughably terrible. Uh, and so I think. When we were looking at what the buff should be, I think something that was much more focused on making three-star Volibear uh, better would have probably been the play as opposed to this. Now, that being said, I don't think this, of all the changes, this was that harmful. Um, if anything, it took Volibear from like only good in certain cases to good in quite a few more cases. So I'm going to like barely give this a pass, but it still feels like we didn't really address the core issue, which is three-star Volibear is kind of a meme. Yeah, it's one of the things I struggle with. I do want to talk about this one a little bit, um, but basically about the three-star Volibear, it's like this set is a set where like a lot of endgame boards will get to dragons, or at least one endgame board that you're going to face is going to be dragons, and um, Volibear just has a really tough time taking down such high health that also can heal because they'll often build healing items or healing augments. Um, last set, it was less of a struggle because there were more like, you know, units on the board. There were just, dragon verticals were not a thing. Um, unless you had the specific augment for it. And so this said, I think we, it's like, do we accept that Volibear is not going to be a primary carry in late game boards, or do we accept that he can be a secondary carry? You know, 
um, or at least make him an item holder. And this is kind of what we've done with like this mana change is that now he can hold items really well. He's like more reliable in the early game. He doesn't take forever to cast. But on the other hand, I think from a design perspective, it's kind of meant to be like, he takes some time to ramp up. If he ults, you're like, oh shit, it's going to start happening. And then he starts lightning everyone with that. At 40 mana, it kind of, it really takes away from that like whole, um, you know, scary, like, is he going to cast? And when he casts, it's going to happen. It's it's just like, he's going to cast because he's at 40 mana. And that's the part that I think gets lost um, with this change. Yep. Cool. Uh, all right. Deja, we nerfed two slightly and we nerfed three. I think the three nerfs is a slam dunk. Deja three was too strong comparatively. Deja three is now in a good spot. No problem. The two one I think is debatable. And I think we've been correctly called out on this a little bit where it's like, the Mirage Deja is actually pretty bad right now. Most of the Mirage variants aren't that great. It was always Guild Deja. And so nerfing Guild and this might have been overkill. That being said, I still think we're going to see Deja at, you know, in the regionals and the worlds and stuff like that. Uh, we saw some of it in the last chance qualifier. But overall, I feel like we could have probably done without this two-star change. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree with that one. It's like Deja still in a good spot and this change was like really small, but like, did we need to do it? No, I, I, I think we would have been fine without it. Yep. Uh, Pantheon. I'm glad we did this change. This is a slam dunk. Pantheon's still good. We're still seeing him played in the Seraphine Graves comp that's been making a comeback. Uh, we're still seeing him played in Soifen. Like this, this change needed to happen. This was a good change. Happy to see this. Yep, I uh, completely agree with this one. Oh, one more thing to add to the Deja one. I think it's like we shouldn't have done that nerf if we didn't also already bring down some of the other top performers. So like after nerfing Soy, um, Siphon, those, those like after nerfing basically comps that like were higher tiered than her, then I think this nerf is like, okay, it's a small nerf. It like helps bring her down and she doesn't just, you know, one shot the back line as often. It was, it was, mo it was part of the whole like skip the front line nerf thingy, but we just didn't yep. go far enough on some of the other ones. Uh, Soam, I actually think this change is fine. Um, Soam continues to struggle with the fact that like you need very specific items in a very specific comp, otherwise you don't play Soam. But in that comp, Soam is still very good. From what I've seen, it's kind of fallen off a bit. I haven't seen a lot of Soam, and it's kind of hard to... Fir like The other big problem with Soam is you have to play that comp, and then you're kind of stuck in that comp, and that comp loses to all the four dragon boards. So it's like one of the best stage four and five boards that falls off. Um, but I think it, the nerf was necessary to get through stage four and five, but it might've just been a buff to four dragon is the crazy thing here. So, uh, TLDR here, I think the change was correct. It's just, there's some set problems we're dealing with here. Yeah. I agree with that. Cool. Uh, siphon nerf. Yep. I'm glad we did it. It was a light change and probably could have done more. Ragnaros is just kind of still biting things and we just got to make sure that doesn't happen nearly as much. So, yep. Uh, yep. One of the things where this is basically going back to almost what her uh, his mana used to be, but we buffed the mat max mana when players didn't discover how to play so Soifen yet, and players discovered it, and now we had to bring it back. Thus, is this is just like how TFT yep. is. Players will constantly continue to um, develop new strategies, and then we have to adapt to them. And it's like, yeah, if you go back two patches, like why did we buff Soif uh, yeah. Siphon? But it's like, well, back then there wasn't a strat around Siphon yet, and so that kind of stuff is constantly what we struggle with with tft and yep. why we um have to react so quickly yep uh ao shen i think this was a success we nerfed ao shen ao shen needed a nerf um hell there's a world where this could have been 200 and he's probably okay um he's still the best end game board but you know at least he's not like at least you can possibly beat him with things like a shroud and jumping on him and stuff like that but uh this nerf needed to happen yeah, definitely needed to happen. I've seen oh, Ashen's die before casting now, which is great. So, yep. uh, Zoe, same thing. I think I think the, the Zoe change was good. Zoe's not casting nearly as much, and then the Terra change looked big on paper, but double gargoyle Terra is still a monster that tanks and does t like. If anything, I think Terra could even stand to go down further. Or there was some deeper work to do with Terra, where we go into her spell and don't make her so dependent on gargoyle stoneplate. But yeah, that, it, that's probably out of scope. So it certainly didn't help that the it, uh, Terra was bugged to you know not have the B patch 19B changes. Uh, yes. so that Terra was also too tanky for like an entire week. Yep, true. Okay, uh, augments uh, Beast Den. 
this nerf landed perfectly and shows where our kind of like our gold framework needs to be that like 25% attack speed for your team is basically the bar for a gold augment. I think last time you and I checked, according to the website, uh, it was like 4.33 average, which is yep. like good for a general use case augment. So like, I, I think this just shows how overpowered it was, but I'm pretty happy with it at 25%. And like I said, I think that's going to be our framework for gold moving forward. Another one that it's like we should have done this sooner but this is a this is like a really great change it was basically like um when we shifted the usage of it to be much easier players still weren't really playing around shapeshifters eventually they discovered soyfin and it's like wow this is super op in soyfin oh i guess like there was a zaya comp for a little while too but yeah uh agree like the the change was really good and then this is kind of where we're setting our gold bar yep uh built different you can no longer be offered multiple tiers of built different and double trouble. I'm just going to call these both in the same one. I think this is an example of where the contrast of fun versus competitiveness always comes at a head. I think those rare games where you managed to get two of them were very fun for you, uh, but clearly the advantage was too much. Um, I think in Built Difference case, if we're going to make this change, which we did, there's now some interesting challenges, right? Where it's like, is Built Different 1 even worth it now? Question mark. Uh, generally on the whole, I think now... The fact that you can't hit these high rolls has lowered built difference performance quite a bit. So maybe we should have coupled this with some buffs to built different. Um, and then the, the other little curveball here is we didn't do this to featherweights, which is interesting because featherweights kind of has the same logic where you have to jump through a hoop, the hoop being play low cost units, to get the buff. Um, though that one I'm still like in on the fence that I don't think it was nearly as big a hoop and so therefore it's okay um, yeah so yeah uh you know just to me it's like i think th there's a there is a slight distinction between the two where it's like built different double trouble you have to craft your entire strategy around this where it's featherweights and triforce um they're just buffing specific units on your board you don't really feel as bad when you don't get full value out of it for example if you like carry seraphine zeri you know, you have like three or four of you, three units getting value. You're like, that's that's good enough. My main unit is at least getting value. Whereas built different, you kind of want almost all of your units getting value, except for the supportive units. Yep. Um, I I think this is something to like one of our big takeaways where it's like something that changes your strategy so much in this kind of way, like double trouble, um, built different, and also preparation, which you could never really stack up. Um, these kinds of things, maybe you shouldn't only be offered one of them and we need to balance around the fact that you only have one of them and make sure it's viable um with only one tier and because having two of them just makes it wildly overpowered yep all right uh cutthroat removed good bad augment <laughs> satch yes uh dark flight count now dark flight crown now grants a titan's resolve instead of protectors vow i'm gonna call this in a giant failure of a change actually and the reason i'm gonna say that is because Dark Flight Crown was really, really strong, and this was meant to be a nerf, I believe, and it didn't really do it. And I think Dark Flight Crown is still sitting at like the top. I think we had to go harder here, and I think this was like, frankly, the the cowardly move, if you will. I think we should have done something like only grants you a sword, or instead of a Rengar gives you an Aphelios, or something a little harsher, because even like the like Protector's Vow versus Titan Resolve, it's like debatably a nerf. Um, so I, I think this was not a successful change. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the rundown had the idea around why we did this change, but basically it, we didn't want to give you the item that you also had to sacrifice. It was like this, you could sacrifice this item, but also it should just be an item that's generally usable on many of the units in Dark Light. I think um, the part that we maybe missed was the grants of Rengar, and it's really good placement on 2-1 because it gives you that Rengar, you're going to play towards the strategy for sure now, and you already have your main carry. I think that's the part that yep. um, we missed. Yep, agreed. Uh, gadget Expert. I think this was a light change. Uh, it moved the needle a little, but Gadget Expert is still like, get it, get an early shiv, power level. It still is what it is. I don't know. I've, I've become less of a fan of this augment, but, you know. Yeah, I think... Well, Long term, there might be some adjustments we need to do to this where it's like, it really should make you want to play into the strategy and like emphasize the strategy similar to like build different rather than um, just you take this because shiv plus a bonus to the shiv is good. You don't build a second shiv. You're just like, I have a really strong early yep. game and I'm going to float until late game. So yep. 
that's something we want to address long term. Um, yeah. Uh, Jade Crest was removed. Good. This was a good change. This is another augment that, as a tier one, was hiding as a tier two. So good. glad to see this. Yep. Agreed. Uh, Mage Crown now grants a Lux instead of Silas. So I haven't actually checked the data on this one. I hope this would be successful just using the logic you just applied to Rengar and Dark Flight Crown. Um, I will also say my guess is Mage Crown went down quite a bit because Namzi went down quite a bit. And so this probably leads this to be generally a success without even checking the data would be my guess. But quick search. It's a uh, 4.05. Wow. So diamond. still strong. So still very no, strong. 4.13. Sorry. It's 4.13 Masters Plus. So Okay. So yeah, still I strong. mean... Yeah, but it, like, it got it downward at least, so directionally correct. And this is where I think, like I said, long term, we might have to have conversations if augments stick around about like, you know, were we supposed to give a full item and a key unit or was it supposed to be one component? Because, um, you know, if you compare this to item grab bag, you know, at the prismatic level, it's like, which would you rather have? Two full items or one incredibly tailored full item and an emblem and the tr champion to build it? Like, I think the crowns just might all be generally too strong by comparison yeah can you believe these crowns used to be plus two plus a champion or something oh no, no plus two that <laughs> yeah yeah all right uh personal training now grants jacks instead of olaf um probably a success um yes yep so though i know hyper roll we missed that and so that caused a lot of confusion oopsie yeah but good change yep uh portable forge changes uh collector nerf good infinity force fine Zanya's, I think, was maybe the question mark here. Um, but overall, I think this probably brought Portable Forge down. People still love Portable Forge. It's probably still a good thing here. So, Yeah, Portable Forge is not as great on 2-1 anymore, which is one of the big things. Like, having a collector on 2-1 was massive. And now it's, like, still amazing, but not as massive. So uh, Portable Forge still super popular, and its placement is more manageable now. Great. Uh, preparation. I think this change was directionally good. It made it easier to use. I still think we ended up a little too high, though, and we probably could have nerfed it better. But again, directionally in one step, good. Yeah, we were too afraid to go too far on the um, cap to make it, like, what if it's just not worth it to play around this anymore? That would really suck. Um, I, it ended up, like, it's still really strong. I'm glad it's easier to use, but it, it's it, we should have lowered the cap a little bit more. And so, yep. um, yeah, just directionally good, not far enough. Scope weapons, too. Um, glad this augment got nerfed. The 10 attack speed's gone. We're out of levers now. You know, it, it, it is what it is. It's still very strong. I've seen a lot of people beg for this to get removed. Um, clearly, some of that was Yone, which we then nerfed a bit. But I don't think it's just Yone. So I guess question for you as the original designer of this augment. Are we getting to the point where this needs to be like plus three range as opposed to infinite range? Are we getting to that point? Yeah, that that's definitely a consideration. Um it's really sad because of how transformative infinite ranges is just so much more exciting. But because there are no more levers, it's really scary. Um, I the, the current plan right now is monitoring um, the Yone and Warriors comp and seeing how um, that performs. Because obviously, like this augment is only used for specific comps, kind of like the same way Jeweled Lotus is only for other comps too. Um, so just like, basically, like if we can do it through tuning of units, that would be the best. If not, we have to think about what this augment looks like um and what we can do to change it so i really don't want to do that though cool and then finally think fast no longer offered on 2-1 astral exists this was a necessary evil i i'm glad we made this change yeah same it, it was a fun thing but yep yep agree uh assassin 4 buff yeah fine i don't think it's changed muff i don't think we see a ton of assassin 4 but at least it's an option now in like the rengar comp so cool yep. i agree uh, Cannoneer 4 buff. Admittedly, I was a little worried about this. I was just wrong. Like, this is just not enough, and Cannoneer 4 and 6 are still laughably bad. Namzi's still laughably bad. Yeah, we thought with the Cannoneer, Namzi changed with the ring, uh, uh, Senna buff with this, it'd be enough, but uh, Cannoneers were just so bad that this was not enough. So, sad. Yep. Uh, Dark Flight. This was the Dark Flight 8 nerf. Good. Um, yep, good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, Guardian 6 and 8. So it's funny because this was a very small placebo buff. This didn't really move the needle much, but I have seen some challengers start to explore with some guardian comps and see some pretty good results. So who knows? Maybe guardian is going to be the kind of thing that will like 
see a pocket comp come out. Obviously, if you get the, uh, what is it, heroic, I'm blanking on the last heroic one. Heroic presence. Heroic presence. That changes things a lot. So I, w- I would expect to see like one heroic presence game as we head into world. Yeah, surprisingly, heroic presence is actually in a good spot now with these changes. I mean, also like, you know, Ezra re-roll is a thing and there's a comp to play this around and we buff Nasus 3, that kind of thing. So all of that com- coming together helps uh, make the comp viable, which is great. Like we are finally seeing some Guardian endgame boards. Yep. Speaking of which, uh, Ezreal. Uh, I'm glad we did this. I'm glad Ezreal re-roll is now a thing and can be played. You could maybe argue this was supposed to be 410, 405, maybe? But honestly, it's not like he wins, you know, against like four dragon boards or anything like that. It's not like it, it it's a really good top four comp. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to call this a success, though, because at least there are more things playable. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Like, we can nickel nine the number. I think, like, you're right. But um, yeah, this is directionally a good change for sure. Yeah. All right, Karma. Here's my controversial hot take that I'm sure will end up on Reddit. This change was correct. Karma is balanced at high elo. We basically saw nobody play this during the last chance qualifier and what they went like fourth and sixth the two times it was played. Yeah, it was like five, seven, and eight, something like that. So. Yeah. Um, but Karma is still a low elo stomper and very frustrating. And so because low elo exists and it's a one cost, we probably should have gone a little bit further. Yeah, it, it's it's part of this is perception of like why am I getting beat by a one cost? Yeah. Um, the well, eternal that's the, dragon master problem. Yeah, yeah. More its favorite thing. <laughs> but also, also just like, yeah, it, it's really frustrating because I think um, you know at challenger level there's a lot of players that know how to pos- like the micro positioning, the optimal itemization, like the power of boards are just higher um, throughout the game that the common player is like bleeding out. Um, but at lower elos, it's it's getting punished less, and so we need to like consider that too. And it's just like if you know, for ninety percent of our players, this is not they're not having a good time with this. Um, maybe we should have gone farther so that this wasn't like such a viable comp at that you know for su- such a large majority of our players, basically. Even if it made it so that this isn't playable at the one percent, yep, that's kind of a trade off we have to think about. Yep, uh, Nasus, this change was unimpactful um i think if we really wanted nasus carry to be a thing it would take a little more than just buffing up this number honestly this number could be like 300 and i think nasus carry would still be bad um so i i i did have a nasus carry game i've experienced it firsthand it it is pretty lit more it's it's, it's, it's kind of good i did it as I, well i'm not saying you'll win you'll no top it's, four. it's like fourth like all right yes yeah yeah you can get a fourth yeah uh, it's fun it, though it's uh, a fun fourth He's not and in the he's not carry? in the state long enough. Not the what? He's not in the like Fury of the Dawn state long enough. And so it's like, ooh, you grow big and like tick three or four times and then you're standing around again. And so you tick everyone to death. And then sometimes you walk to the back line and you're like, yes, it's time. Oh, yeah, and then they damage nice. him. And it, but you know, you pair this with like an AD Brahm. You have an AP Nasus AD Brahm. All like, right. Perfect itemization. Perfect. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, uh, Wukong, this is another one I feel like didn't move the needle enough. We're just not seeing Wukong reroll be a thing. Um, I think we could have gone harder, honestly, at one and two star even, too. I just don't think Wukong's an exciting champion right now. Yeah, a little scary to do the one and two, one and two star thing, mainly because like it is a transition into Soifen. It's a transition into like yeah. Olaf. You can have him hold Olaf items, that kind yeah, of thing. So yeah. like, um, But that's why we didn't, but I completely agree. Like, Wuk- Bonky Kong is not a comp. Um really should be so yep uh lilia this is one i actually think was pretty successful i think lilia might be like two percent too weak or it's not even that she's too weak it's that like again she just can't beat dragons but um i actually think lilia reroll is like not the worst comp now it's actually like kind of good yeah lilia reroll is fun it's good it, i think the one thing that lilia struggles with that a lot of reroll comps struggle with is just that you need um to be more like specific with their itemization but like that's okay as long as it's viable and you can like get there there's a dream you know what to build and you know like you can eventually achieve it um so yeah this buff helped us get there yep uh lux all right so i'm gonna be a bit of a dick here for a second this change was not successful because it didn't ship oops yeah, yeah i man 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I think this would have been a good change. It would have brought Lux to a good spot, especially with the mage nerfs um, or the Nomzi nerfs, but did not ship. Oops. Yeah. Do you want to explain a little bit on like what goes wrong and what causes that a bit? Because I'm sure players are just like, you know, what happened? You know, and it's a simple mistake, but like, you know, let's talk about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so some, sometimes when um, we, I guess, would you be able to explain this smart? Or like, yeah, basically, I can explain. I can explain. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so, to... so generally a lot of the times uh, when we're doing our, our changes, uh, we have in our system, there are things called layers. And oftentimes when we're doing the combination of B patches, uh, B patches are on different branches uh, because you have like the live branch and then the in progress branch. And so a lot of that can be, you know, difficult to keep track of. Uh, and to be frank, like the live team is small and we're like, we're trying to make the changes two days before it goes live. Sometimes things end up in the wrong layer in the wrong branch, uh, you know, and it gets missed cause it's the team's moving fast. And so this was one of those side effects where it's just like, it was there, but it wasn't quite checked in properly to the right layer. And then, you know, it gets missed in QA because QA only has two days and it happens, right? And so mistakes happen. Uh, I know some people like to be like, oh my God, a mistake happened. It's terrible. But the reality is this is the kind of mistake that honestly, if you're going to make a mistake, you wish it's this kind. It's like, oh no, something's off by 10. Uh, so it happens. Mistakes happen. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, yeah. You explained that better than I could have. Um, but I, I know some of the responses like small indie company, why do you make mistakes? That kinds of things. It's but I think uh, like an explanation for that is that like we are patching every two weeks and we have to patch like a week before the patch comes out and we have, you know, two days, we, we get data and we have like a day and a half to basically react to that data and like make the changes and lock everything in. Um, it just, we're, we're running on a very aggressive cycle because the nature of TFT is that it evolves so quickly. Players learn and adapt and optimize extremely quickly. And we always have to, we have to follow this aggressive patch cadence so that, you know, you guys are constantly having a balanced game rather than, you know, facing Dragon Mance or Nunu for like two months, that kind of thing. Um, and so that's why, because of this accelerated process and the very aggressive thing, um, we have to, we sometimes do run into like mistake, mistakes happen or we're still human and we're a small team. Yep. All right, uh, Kaisa, this one, clearly a mistake. I think a combination of like people really picking up on just base Kaisa being powerful combined with the two, four, two and four Dragon Mancer buff that made her deal even more damage led to some strategies here. Uh, I think if we hadn't done the two and four Dragon Mancer, maybe we could have got away with this. But either way, clearly the combination of the two was bad. I think this was a case of like, the, she looked bad at the data at the time when we were doing it and nobody was playing reroll Kaisa. People were itemizing Kaisa to, to item hold for some back then. And then, you know, at some point players optimized, figured out Shimmer Scale, figured out there was a reroll version that developed in CN that eventually transferred over to the rest of the world. And it was like, okay, well, Kaisa 3 was already good. We didn't need to buff her. And then we had to nerf her again in the B patch. Yep. Uh, Nunu 3 buff. Yeah. Not enough, but yeah, Nunu three, okay. <laughs> but at yeah, least we, at least we're not seeing Dragon Mancer Nunu. Yes, that, that that's always the fear. But like, it, it's impossible. It's really hard to get to Nunu three because like Nunu two is not great. Yep. So, uh, Rakan three buff didn't move the needle. It, it's fine. It just didn't change anything. If anything, it makes the Seraphine comp a little better. So, um, sure. but at least he's kind of worth twenty seven gold now. Sure. So yeah, directionally good. Yep. All right. Here's a hot take. The Seraphine change. I think when we shipped this, a lot of people were like, this was unnecessary. The Seraphine comp was already in the dumpster. Uh, we were right on this one. I am glad we shipped this change. The Seraphine comp has been rising again, it is becoming good. And I'm glad Seraphine 3 isn't this like giant, giant instant win condition. It's still good. This, this is a slam dunk on our end. We, we win this round. Yeah. Uh, I agree with that. No, I was. I, I, we did get a lot of feedback in the beginning. I, you know, we were like seeing Seraphine three still be really good, but you know, I, I think she was just less common. And now when you see <laughs> that player hit it, you're not doomed for sure. It's just like we, she needed this little nudge down a Seraphine three. Yep. Uh, Silas, this is another one I'd call it like Rakan uneventful. Like Silas three is okay, but again, mages are in still a rough spot. I don't think this moved the needle much. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, directionally good though. Silas three really needed something. Just. Um, yep. Perhaps not enough. This is a big patch. We got a lot to go through. Let's try to power through these. All right. Grave 3 nerf. Yes. It did, he needed it. Good. Yes. Hecarim 3 buff. 
Eh, 200's not going to change much, but fine. Probably should have probably gone further here, actually, on the, on yep. the damage. Uh, Jace 3 buff. I think this was not enough. I think Jace 3 is still not good. Which is surprising because this is actually like a really big buff. I was surprised to see that this was not good enough because 150 damage on that. It like just AOE shows you how damage. bad Jace 3 Like, Jace 3 is bad. So, yeah. Don't yeah. worry. I'm going to fix that in 1222. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Nope. Uh, Neela 3 nerf. Uh, I think the Neela 3 nerf actually was a little overkill, but. Ah. Uh -huh. I, Nila 3 was really yeah, strong I, before I... 800. 800 is where I think this should have ended up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Uh, Shio, you 3 nerf. Yeah, solid. Happy with this. Yep. Uh, Swain, 1 and 2 buff. Uh, pretty happy with this, though I will say Swain is now back to that point where he's playable and pretty good now, and so it exposes the frustrations. I saw one player call it, it's just an anti-heal check, and it's like, yep. That's what drain tanks are. I, yeah, I, for for this champion's design, I think we've done everything in our power to make him as good as he can be. The one thing is I think there are a lot of players that wish he was an AP carry that you could like slap AP items on him and do well. That can't be possible while he's also healing much. Um, and I really don't think we need another four cost AP dragon. So it is what it is. And I think, you know, lessons to be learned. Yeah, uh, from a design perspective, Completely agree, but basically, like I think, from a balance perspective, Swain is as close as, yep. as you said, like as close as he can be, and he he works well. He's very important, like super important in that Rengar comp, which is great. He's good in the Dark Flight comp that centers around him. So great. Yep. Uh, Zaya three buff, not enough. Zaya three still kind of not amazing. One hundred percent agree. Uh, Shivana three buff. To be honest, I think with the the numbers we had, this was good. But Shivana 3 is still garbage, and we still ha haven't solved the why is Soraka better than every three-star dragon problem, so. Unless you're soulless, you lose twice with Soraka 3, so. Well, I mean, right, but everyone else has skill, so, you know. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> as, as for you, soulless, enjoy that. <laughs> Losing twice with Soraka 3 takes a special kind of talent. <laughs> True. Uh, Terra 3 nerf, fine. I, Terra 3 is still great. Hooray. Air three is still great. Agreed. Yep. Uh, Zoe three buffs. Good. Fine. No problem. Yeah. That that Jana thing is is massive. So a whole team five point attack speed. Yep. Uh, Zerat change. Uh, I'm gonna call this a failure because it introduced a bug where it stopped working. Uh, so gonna call that a miss. I mean, theoretically, it could have been a success, but it's one of the things about TFT is that like changes that you don't expect to break things break things i can't go too deep into it on what happened in the back end but it's like man how um well i mean they already, yeah. they experienced that with the remember the change where cannoneer works with lifesteal equals whispers cannoneer is now insanely op you know like yeah things are interconnected it's a very interconnected game and it's hard to cover every case in our time frames yeah um but yep Agree. Yeah, this would have been a good change, and it aligns our taunts because all of our taunts are basically like if the unit is in range, attack you, attack you. That's kind of how we want this to, want taunts to be in the game. Just it's very straightforward. It doesn't. We want to avoid like what Zizirot used to be, which was like melee units would walk around trying to like follow them, then not follow them, and it was just like really jank looking and really frustrating for the player playing against the Zizirot. So this is a good change. It just I wish it actually shipped. Yep. All right, so then we did a B patch, and it's not that we necessarily needed to do a B patch, more that we wanted to do a B patch and try to like help the game out a bit. Um, I forget, what was the one thing that really made us need to ship this? Wasn't there one bug? Dragon 6 and Terra bug fixes. Okay. Because they weren't matching the B patch from 12.19. Right. So yeah, so obviously, again, with the layer thing, a B patch didn't get applied to the right layer, and so we lost our Dragon 6 change from 12.19B, so we put that in. So Terra went back to where she was supposed to be for 19B. Dragon 6 went back down. Um, so hopefully Dragon 6 isn't just throwing all the one-star dragons and you win. Um, so there's that. But then we have some more spicy ones to talk about here. Uh, High-end shopping and level-up being temporarily removed until 1222. Um, this is a change that, like, for the wider audience, I hate to make. Um, yeah, they're, they're strong augments. But if you even look in the data, they're not that insane. Like, for the general player base... They're actually pretty healthy. And we also saw in set six, it's not like these augments were overpowered. In fact, if anything, I think high-end shopping was a terrible augment in set six. 
Um, it's just the four dragon comp in particular is just such a big swing. And right now it's gated behind it's hard to get to nine. And it's hard to hit all those things. An augment that goes, just kidding, it's not hard, means that trait just becomes so much more powerful. So it's it's going to be necessary for competitive, but as a designer, I hate to make these kind of changes. Yeah, we, we, we didn't have a patch run to talk about these, but essentially we're okay with the fact that like late game boards will have a lot of dragons. It's kind of, it's the core mechanic of the set. They're the super units of the set. And it's we're accepting that that's a thing. They're just kind of hard to get to. And a lot of times if you're just playing a bunch of one-star dragons, you're not going to survive very long. You might go fourth, but you'll most likely go bot four. You can't just like rush nine every game. It's not, fast nining isn't like a, a lifestyle. It's a, a thing that you finesse yourself into basically. Um, so yeah. we're okay with that, but... Uh, these just took away all the, you know, it just it made it way too easy as Mort said, basically. And so like, we had to do that. I, I like the idea that we are open to making temporary changes like this for competitive patches if it's extremely necessary. And I think in these two cases, they were extremely necessary. Yep. Um, all right. Then we have uh, Dragon Mancer health nerf. Uh, I think this helps. I think if anything, it kind of helped at the you know the level uh, for like challengers. We're still, from what I can tell, still seeing Karma's at low elo, uh, just because of the sheer DPS output. But I think this helps. Yeah, yeah, they, pretty hefty nerfs and um, definitely bringing it into like a, you can't you don't force this every game kind of thing. So yep. we're still monitoring, gonna make sure it stays good. Yep. Uh, Jack's nerf. I like to give credit where credit is due. This is not something I would have considered. Jax was just literally not on my radar as like something that was causing problems. Um, but props to like Dasic and a few other challenger players who reached out and were like, yo, Jax in particular is providing just so much early game power to your ability to survive against certain comps that that's what's allowing some of like that shimmer and jade to do really, really well. Uh, and so I appreciated that problem identification here. And so we put in a Jax nerf that overall I think has been very healthy. Yeah, one, one of the things is like, we were considering, we wanted to nerf the early game of Shimmer Scale in a way. Um, we were considering Zach, um, but talk to challenger players. And we do talk to challenger players and we, we do take their feedback very seriously. Um, that led to an internal discussion. We were like, well, Jax helps us hit also the Soyfin comp and Jax without items. We're just like, you know, putting him in, in, in the game, watching him. And it's like, he's cast, he can cast multiple times without items. It's like, that's doesn't feel correct. You know, if you itemize him, he can absorb more damage. And cast again, that's fine, but um, Naked Jax was too good, and so we went with this uh, mana nerf direction instead. So, yeah, definitely a shout-out to the challengers dropping with this. Yep. Um, then we have the Kaisa nerf, the Shioyu nerf, and the Yone nerfs, kind of like hitting those top comps. All very light nerfs that should be pretty healthy. I think we're seeing all these comps still be played, which means it's the right kind of nerf. That being said, B-Patch has been out for three days. Uh, I think the next big step is going to be watching some of these big regionals. I know Brazil's got there soon. Um, you know, NA is going to have theirs in like next week. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. Cause I know both of them, I believe are playing on the B patch. So we'll have to see. So yeah, definitely a lot more monitoring from here. Yep. And then the astral orb bug. Um, this is what happens when the decimal place is in a wrong spot. Uh, there was one particular setting that was supposed to be 0 0.05, but instead was 0.5. And so players figured that out uh which honestly thank you for finding the bug uh but yeah we needed to fix that so that 11 astral wasn't just giving full items and you weren't just camping at 11 astral so yep cool and that's it so yeah kind of a a rough patch of like some things off some things on getting things in the right spot some bugs some misalignment uh, i think this is also a side effect of like you know, people working on this set and next set all at the same time and different layers. And so some stuff to figure out there as we get people more isolated into their lanes. Um, but overall, overall, we did have some people like really some legitimate challenger players say, even despite all this, it was like one of the best patches of all time because you could play different styles. You could play reroll, you could play fast nine, you could play level at seven, you could play three cost. Like it was a good patch. So, you know, despite like sometimes we like to over fixate on the negatives but there were a lot of positives this patch, and so there's no like, there's no world where this is like the bottom tier of patches. Like this was a good yep. patch overall. Sometimes we're also just a little hard on ourselves. So, yeah, it, um, you know, the, the some a lot of the feedback from the challenger players were basically like, you know, you can play kind of every cost. You can play lots of different strategies. Um, I think there, 
obviously there will still be like the complaints about certain things, but basically the overall takeaway was like the meta is in a good spot and the patch is actually like a really good patch, which is great. Um, it's good to see that like, you know, as we ramp up to competitive, like everything is playable. We want to see a lot of variety in those games. And um, so yeah, kind of happy with how it went, how, how it is. It's just like, you know, avoiding mistakes and like sometimes um, not going far enough, that kind of thing. It is st stuff that is going to happen, but um, I think it's a good thing that the patch is still in a good spot. Yep. All right. Uh, that's going to do it for us on this patch postmortem. The next one is the last one for Dragonlands. And to be honest, I think it's going to be a short one because 1221 is pretty short and we won't have seen worlds yet. So it won't be like the deepest patch postmortem because I think the real judge here is going to be we're going to ship 1221. And then we're going to see how Worlds plays out and how the Worlds meta goes. Um, so who knows? Maybe we should delay it till after. But at that time, we'll all be playing PB in the next set anyway. So who knows? We'll figure yeah. it out. So, all right. That's going to do it from us. Until next time, take it easy. See ya.